Good morning, it is Phil to the Brim, and it is Friday, March 19th. What a beautiful rainy day it is. And we are talking about the power of agreement still, because we are called to have powerful lives, and it's training of our senses, which has to do with agreement. And we've had a long kind of series. The Lord is just really digging deep in this, and He's on the sense of touch. But remember, the reason why we're talking about our senses is because as mature believers... We can train our senses to discern good and evil, according to Hebrews 5.14. May you remember that scripture. In the last couple sessions, I told you that scripture shows us, and we know this, that our touch brought death. In other words, in, in Genesis, Adam and Eve went and reached out to touch the fruit that they were not supposed to and ate of it, and as a result, it ushered in Sickness and death and evil. But Jesus' touch redeemed us. He touched us. He saved us. He delivered us. He reached out his hand to us. And he brought us through his blood, through the cross, through the work of the cross. And yesterday I talked about how his touch cleansed us. Now I want to go a little bit more specific. How his touch heals us. His touch heals us. Isaiah 53, 5 says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. His blood has cleansed us. And because his body was broken for us, we can be healed. His touch heals us. And even throughout scripture, we find Jesus touching people and them becoming healed. Specifically today, I want to say and talk about, and I felt the Holy Spirit really emphasize this, that his touch heals our mind. I find that many times people can receive or uh, embrace his touch, his healing power in their bodies but not in their minds. It's almost like we categor make something categorically different. And I feel like the Lord really wants to emphasize that He wants to touch our minds. Jesus heals our minds. Hebrews 9.14, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. He cleanses our conscience and our conscience is connected to our mind. Hebrews 10.22 Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. Sprinkled with what? His blood and our bodies washed with pure water. He connects our conscience to our bodies which we do actions by. That's how we function through our bodies. So the Lord is saying, I want to heal minds and he wants to cleanse consciences because a lot of times we have not released some of those things that we have guilt and shame about or regret in our past. And the Lord touches our minds, our thought life, our memories even, so that we don't have a, a conscience that is evil in the sense of not maybe impure thoughts, but a conscience that may um, harass us, may make us feel condemned because of something we've done in our old life or in something even in, as a believer that the Lord has forgiven us from. He cleanses our conscience. He heals our conscience. And also, He touches our conscience in the, in the sense that He's made it new because many times, and this is, can be cultivated in our life, that there's things that we have done or things that we think is okay to do that are not right to do because our conscience has been seared, has been calloused, um, and, you know, in this world of sin and some of the philosophies of the world, it cultivates the conscience to believe that something that is really wrong is actually right. And the Lord, when he touches our minds, he cleanses our conscience and he makes us sensitive to his Holy Spirit, to his word, to his ways so that we become holy like him. 
The most important thing I want to ask you today is, are you letting him touch your mind? And are you letting him touch your conscience? Are you letting him touch your memories? You know what? The truth is this. You do not have to have haunting memories from your past. The blood of Jesus heals. The blood of Jesus heals. You know, there's a statement that we say when we're praying with people and doing some healing of the past, healing of memories. When you go back to that memory, always take Jesus with you. Why? Because he heals. And even believers, I find, talk about memories without taking Jesus with them. And Jesus is the one who heals the mind. You know, one of the most powerful uh, scriptures and, and incidences of healing was when Jesus delivers the man who has a legion of demons in his body. Mark 5.15 tells us the result of that. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed in his right mind. Interesting how he states this. Dressed in his right mind. What a beautiful picture. This man who was harassed, who was um, controlled by demonic power in his mind, and now he's dressed in his right mind. And Jesus is talking to him. And the people of the city come. And you know, it's interesting in the story. The man wants to go and be a disciple of Jesus. And the people of the village area, that region, are fearful of Jesus and beg him to leave as a result of this powerful thing that has happened. But Jesus tells the man, go back to your village and be a testimony. Show them your difference. And he does that. And how we know that he does that is that later in Mark chapter 6, verse 53, Jesus returns to that region and there are crowds waiting for him, waiting to be healed by him. And it is likely, although it's not directly stated, that it was a testimony of this man. Because when Jesus returns to this region, it says in Mark 6, 53, that they are carrying the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Wow. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to, t to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. Now listen. The Lord did this. There was even a greater thing that happened as a result of Jesus healing this man's mind, this demoniac's mind who became whole, who was dressed in a right mind. I want to say the Lord wants to touch our minds. You know, scripture does say to put on, take off our old self and put on our new self. Let me read that to you. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Be renewed in your spirit of your minds. I find that the mind is the gatekeeper for what happens in other areas of our life. The mind is a gatekeeper. It either builds our faith or it tears it down. And I'm saying today the Lord wants to touch our mind. As a believer, he really wants to get into those areas that we have locked down. Or we have a belief system that, that for some reason that area can't be healed. He wants us to have and wear and live with a renewed spirit of our minds to put on our new self. Interesting because in Mark, he says the man clothes himself with a new mind. And in Ephesians, it says wear the spirit of a renewed mind. God bless you. Pray about this word.